dad finally got his computer out of here, so now I just got one more wild and crazy computer experiment to try before my kitchen table can actually be a kitchen table again for the first time in however long it's been. The hunt is continuing to find an intelligent use for this piece of junk dinosaur, Dell Dimension L566CX, circa the turn of the millennium. This machine was the first computer my dad ever had when he was the last person in the family to not have any kind of email access after I went off to college. He didn't want to be the, uh, the old hillbilly who was living in the past or something along those lines, so he went out and got himself a cheap computer. And that's what this thing is. 600 megahertz Intel Celeron, that's megahertz for you people who are too used to everything being in gigahertz these days. What the heck, there's probably smartphones that are faster than this computer. <laughs> Anyways, 600 megahertz Celeron, originally 64 megs of RAM, that's megabytes for you people that don't know your retro terminology, just kidding. 64 megs of RAM, I upped it to 256 and... <laughs> Anyways. One time in college, some of my geek friends pretty much tortured the living daylights out of a Pentium 2 by getting it to run Windows XP. It was way below the uh, it was way below the recommended system specifications, but they managed to get it working. I'm curious if that would work. Uh, I'm curious if that'll work nowadays with me trying to put Windows 8 Consumer Preview on this piece of junk. Now, people have been telling me, now I've been, excuse me, people, um, I've been hearing people say that Windows 8 is easier on old hardware than Windows 7. Let's put that to the test, shall we? <laughs> this machine is currently running Windows 2000, and I really don't give a darn what's on it. I really don't really give a darn about this machine anymore. I'm just trying to keep it out of the trash heap. So, DVD in the quad speed DVD ROM can't burn anything. Not even a full speed DVD drive. Let's see if this thing will even install. Yeah, this should be interesting. Things aren't really working out very well with a dual boot on the laptop because, uh, oh, there it goes. You know, I'm just not using it. I think I'm probably going to wind up taking the Windows 8 consumer preview off of that laptop. But just for the just for fun, let's see if we can get it to install on this old dinosaur. And it did not try to boot off of the floppy drive or off the CD drive and it's booting up Windows 2000. Trouble already. Listen to that hard drive. I think it's running the last crappy Maxter drive. Um, that I still have that hasn't kicked the bucket yet. There is nothing in this computer that has any redeeming value to it. Wow, listen to that thing. Even though mechanical hard drives are an old technology that are, that's on its way out, they come a long way from the noisy, rattly, clanky days like this. Ugh. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> Let's go, applying security policy. Technically, this machine can run Windows 2000. And now the speaker's in a better position so we can hear the Windows 2000 startup sound. Turn the volume way up. Here it goes. Come on, boot, boot, boot! Figure it takes this long to load Windows 2000. What's Windows 8 going to be like? This might be good to compare it to. Okay, loading personal settings. Yeah, there's no internet access yet. Oh man, now there's a sound that I'll bet you geeks that watch these videos haven't heard in a really long time. Okay, uh, where's my desktop? This is gonna be a long... Oh, there it is. Video. Oh, there comes my wallpaper. 15 seconds later. <laughs> One of the generic Windows 2000 wallpapers. So, do I even want to save a disk image of whatever I have on this drive? Hmm, I'll have to give that some thought. Maxter 6Yo 6 Solo, as I affectionately like to call those drives because of their model numbers. Yep, last drive standing. All the other Maxters I have are or had, I should say, are long dead. <laughs> Say goodbye to Windows 2000. I don't have very high hopes for this whole Windows 8 thing. I mean, this machine is so old that even modern distributions of Linux, many of them, uh, don't really work very well with this system. Another retro sound for you folks. Yeah, for all the talk of Linux being better on older hardware, a lot of that seems to have gone away in more recent years. 
Then again, this machine was a crappy machine back in 2000, so maybe I should leave poor Linux alone. Uh, at least it still runs Windows 2000, though, if I ever want to really mess around with a retro machine. Can't get any good software on it that stays up to date, though. Even the uh, web browser, Firefox, can't be, uh, can't be brought up to its newest version here. Okay, what key do I hit to get into the BIOS? Delete? Oh, delete. Hit delete if you want to run setup. Yeah, I'm hitting it. Do you have to smash it? <laughs> Intel Celeron 566E megahertz, 500, oh, excuse me, 512 megs of RAM. Yeah, this has all the, uh, this has all the RAM from my original HP. By, by dumb luck, this machine takes the same RAM as the first computer I ever owned, so. Oh, brother. Uh-oh, not good. First boot device floppy, second boot device CD-ROM. This isn't looking good, folks. Boot number two. Let's see if this thing's even gonna read. Or maybe, who knows, you know, after 10 years, maybe this drive's finally dead. I'd really hate to have to swap drives to try and get this thing working. <laughs> Floppy drive. Dinosaur. Okay, now read off of the DVD. Okay, it blinked, and it did absolutely nothing. Here it goes, starting Windows 2000 again. Maybe I have to, uh, can I put this on a CD-ROM or something? Hmm, I wonder. I've got a really ugly feeling that this isn't going to work. <laughs> First, the machine only has two USB 1.1 ports, or maybe they're USB 1.0, I don't know. It's that old. Since I only have two ports, and I want to try using the plug-in drive, I brought down a hub and plugged everything into there, and I got this thing here. It works, technically, it gets power, but when it tried to install in Windows 2000, the whole system rebooted all by itself. So here come the power problems. Let's turn off the automatic reboot so it doesn't crash like that again. And <laughs> another retro sound. The changes you made require you to restart the computer, blah, 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 blah. No, I don't want to restart the computer. Here's some good news here. Finally, after one crash, the drive is showing up and it's detecting as a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM, etc. Next question, can I boot off of it? Since obviously the built-in optical drive is, isn't going to work for this one. Problem is, even with the plug-in drive, the speed's going to be greatly deteriorated because it's not USB 2. Why do I even bother with this nonsense? We're in trouble once again. Uh-oh. There's no selection for USB stuff to boot off of. Not good. I get this ugly feeling that this is a lost cause. Will it boot? That is the question. <laughs> Blendtec's gonna throw something at me if I don't stop parodying them. Okay, Dell.com, etc., etc., etc. Come on. Come on, do the floppy drive test. You know, Leo Laporte on his Tech Guy show was talking about how people that do these kinds of videos like to edit things to make things look easier than they actually are. I'm going to back off on some of that and show you just how tedious this is. Okay, okay, any drive activity? Nope. Went straight to the hard drive yet again. I think I'm kicking against the bricks here. I don't think I have a parallel ATA optical drive that reads DVDs that I could swap in for that thing. What was I thinking with this mess? Well, Piano happens to be the last bastion of parallel ATA optical drives. I just remembered these two drives are not serial ATA. Last Pata optical drive standing. So, though I was really hoping I wouldn't have to do this, let's gut this thing. Well, this thing has seen better days. Next question, what do I jumper it as? Huh, I gotta mess with jumpers again. Right now it's set to cable select, but that system might be so old that I actually have to jumper it as a master or a slave drive in order for this to work correctly. Why am I doing this? Manufactured September 2006. Oh, 2006 was a good year. Okay, some good news for a change. The old drive that came out is jumpered cable select as well, so that's good. There we go, all upgraded, so to speak. Well, one thing I gotta give Dell credit for, it's real easy to pop open the case to change parts out. Thumbs up for that. Now, the big question. Let's see if it works with the new drive. Start up, uh -huh. come on, open. Open, open, open. Oh crap, oh double crap. <laughs> we gotta do the paper clip thing to get it open because the belt's worn out. Medic! 
Never underestimate the usefulness of a precision set screwdriver. I didn't even know that thing was the same size for doing the paperclip trick. All right. Well, while we get the power off, let's pull this thing the rest of the way open and... Okay, take two. Uh, close your drive. There we go. Yeah, this drive's kind of old and the belt's a little worn out, so sometimes you gotta use the paper clip to get it open if it's been closed for too long. Okay. So, is this thing gonna boot off the DVD or what? Drive's certainly doing quite a bit. I need to quit torturing this old thing and just let it out to pasture for good, but it still works, you know? Why throw out a perfectly good computer? Okay, boot. First boot device is the DVD. Ugh. Maybe this just boots off of CDs, but not DVDs. Because here it goes into Windows 2000 again. So all that yanking drives out of the out of my systems and things like that was for nothing. Unbelievable. Piece of junk. We gotta figure something else out here. Here's the part that I just don't get. Ready for this? Let's put the disc back in and let it spin up with Windows already started. So it won't boot off of DVDs. However, as soon as it gets up to speed here, oh, there it goes. See, it actually shows up here. Computers, I swear. What happens if we double click it? Might as well, I mean, if this doesn't work, this whole project's a lost cause. I've certainly done enough messing around and taking parts out of my own computers to get this going. Your computer can't run this version of Windows. You need an installation disk that's compatible, etc., etc., etc. Probably because I'm running a 32-bit OS. Yeah, well, I don't feel like downloading the Windows 8 preview for 32-bit. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Enough's enough. Get this thing out of this dinosaur. Uh. Well, it was worth a shot. It would have been funny if I could have gotten it working on this. Maybe there's some other way that I'm not thinking of here. I mean, I could try a flash drive, but, you know, this thing doesn't boot off a of USB stuff. It's got to be off of an optical disk. <sighs> Just push the button. And I didn't push the button enough, so we got to use the start menu. Start, shut down. Oh, there it goes. Well, it was worth a shot. I'm going to put all my computers back together now. Thanks for watching, folks. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.